So we're going to talk about a drunk particle returning home an infinite number of times. And we're going to prove this using a random walk. So a random walk shows that if we're in state i, we can only go to i state i plus 1, or go down a single state to i minus 1 in a transition. So for example, here is a single transitional probability matrix that shows for an infinite number of steps, it can only change one state at a time. So, given this, it's clear that all the states will communicate. And therefore, all the states are either recurrent or transient. And we want to show that a particle will return the infinite number of times if it's recurrent. If it's transient, it will not return to its starting location an infinite number of times. So we're saying that the probability of going up a state or going below a state is one half. So to determine if this particle will return to its starting state, we show that we can show that it returns in two steps via a binomial distribution right here. And by using Stirling's approximation of n factorial, we can simplify this probability to 1 over the square root of pi n. And we can see that this summation actually goes to infinity. Therefore, it's recurrent, and if a random particle taking a random walk will return to its starting position an infinite number of times. In the quest of showing that a drunk Laurier student will return home with probability 1. We model a Laurier student by a drunk particle with probability a half of going in each direction. And the particle can actually walk in this lattice. Uh, after every turn, he, it has probability 50% of going east or west, and probability 50% of going north or south. So the possible points that the drunk Laurier student can attain are shown in this lattice, uh, which are the coordinates uh, whose sum is an even number. Um, and we see from this lattice, and you know, in a similar fashion as the one-dimensional case, that the Laurier student can only return home in an even number of steps. So we actually model the Laurier's uh, decision-making by flipping two fair coins. Uh, one of them determines the east and west component of his walk, and the other one determines the north and south component of his walk. Let's, let's call these xn for the position after n, n flips, and yn for the position after n flips. We can take a look at what happens after two flips, uh, in the x direction. After two flips of the coin, the student has uh, a binomially distributed uh, east-west -west component where he has probability a half of being back at the original uh, origin uh, uh, coordinate and a quarter in being away from it for, for each direction. Now, furthermore, coin tosses are independent uh, so that we can write the probability uh, of him being a, a particular x coordinate and a particular y coordinate as the product of the probabilities uh, for each coin toss. And we're actually interested in the probability of the Laurier student returning to the origin, modeling here his home, uh, after an even number of tosses, which we denote as p origin comma origin uh, to the power of paren paren to n. So like in the previous problem, uh, the distribution after two n tosses is a shifted binomial distribution. So the probability that the student goes back to the zero coordinate is uh, two, two, two n choose n times one half the power of n times one half the power of n, which is simply a binomial distribution. Now combining these two probabilities, we take the product, so we end up having two choose n to, times one over two to the power of two n squared. Now using Hudson's approximation in the previous problem, using via Stirling, we can approximate the inner part of this uh, probability by one over root pi over n, pi times n. So taking the square of that, we obtain one over pi times n. Summing over all possible values of n, we obtain a harmonic series, which uh, diverges to infinity. And uh, it turns out, given this, uh, every single state is recurrent, so that the Laurier student, after being drunk, returns home if infinitely often, but he also goes back to Wills infinitely often, goes back to Brixton infinitely often, goes back to Weinrack infinitely often, but unfortunately never shows up to class. So now we're going to take a look at the surprising result of Jose the Angel 
not being able to return home an infinite number of times. So first we'll take a look at what's the probability that Jose does return home. And so the probability, given that he can go forward or back, left or right, up or down, and to return home is 1 over 6 to the 2 over the n. And the number of paths is this huge expression right here. So the probability that Jose will return home is our lovely expression based here. So let's take this expression and rearrange it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to actually maximize our equation to see if we can show that even when maximized, it still is, uh, it's still, it, it, the sum converges. So when we rearrange, we can find this expression here. And we see that our expression here, while squared, we can maximize uh, if k, j, and n minus j minus k are all equal, as close to n over 3 as possible. As a result, we can take one of these expressions out and rewrite it, given our maximization, and leave the other one here. And this one is actually just going to be a binomial sum, and we sum over all values, therefore it becomes 1. So as a result, we have a very similar uh, expression to what we've seen in one and two dimensions. Once we use Sterling to approximate it, we can actually see that it becomes a summation of 1 over n to the 3 over 2, and as a result, this will actually converge. Therefore, it's transient. As a result, Jose the Angel will not be able to return home an infinite number of times, given that he travels for an infinite length of time. What happens to time-traveling, flying, lorry students? Do they get back home? Well, probably not. They might just go away to infinity. And it turns out, not only if they're time-traveling, but also if they're wormhole warping, they will also do the same thing. And no matter what dimension you ask, there's a, the result that generalizes this to any dimension. It's called Polya's random walk theory. And it turns out that only for the one and two-dimensional lattices do we have that the case the case that every state is recurring. But for any lattice of dimension 3 and above, the states are transient. Unfortunately, we'll never get back home the higher the